So any, any last words or should I check this off? I got nothing. Okay. Great. How did I get into newspapering? Yeah. Um, I guess it started in high school. Uh, kind of innocently. Uh, I was, uh, I don't even remember why, but I guess because I was sort of the computer geek. I was uh, roped into uh, laying out and producing the um, like student newspaper, and, and this isn't like student newspapers in the U.S. where you have it on, on news. Like this is eight and a half by eleven. It's like I think it came out three times, and it's just it's a newsletter essentially. Um, in CJEP, I worked for the uh, the student paper, the Banner Snatch at John Abbott College. Um, again, it was just kind of you know I was I was doing uh, at the time uh, science degree. Uh, or science diploma, whatever you call it, C-Chef things. And I, you know, sort of worked there on, on the side. I made friends there and, and, you know, wrote a bit for the paper. And, but even at that point, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm going to computer science, I'm going to be, you know, computer whiz or math whiz or something. Uh, it was in C-Chef that I realized that math, like once I, once I started taking calculus, math just wasn't for me. And I went to Concordia, I took computer science, and I worked for the student paper. I worked for the Link, and I was writing articles. Uh, eventually, I was I was editing, and then, you know, as as the degree started going on, as the year started going on, I realized, you know, I'm spending more time here than I am in classes, and I'm enjoying journalism a heck of a lot more than computer science. So, uh, in my last year, I applied to uh, Concordia's graduate journalism program. Spent a year there and then uh, got a job at the Gazette. Okay, what was it about the journalism that sort of tweaked your crank or turned your crank? I'm not sure. I, 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 I mean, I, I have a very healthy curiosity about things, but even then, I don't, I don't go around pestering people with questions. Like, I'm not the kind of person. Um, I think it was just. I honestly couldn't tell you. Okay. Maybe it was maybe it was seeing my name in print. I like you know like mm -hmm. seeing my name places, but. Uh, but if there was, there's one, there's one thing that pushed you in there. The motivation would be. I wish I wish I could tell you. Okay. And 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 you know, honestly, I was horrible in English in high school. English was my worst course in high school. Okay. I got sixties. You know, my English teacher. Uh, it was it was just it was it was embarrassing how bad I was. I had I had no I had no love of books. I had no love of reading. In fact, I still don't like books all that much. Even though I do a heck of a lot of reading. Um, and and then it was it was just I don't okay. know. Cool. I assume you're still getting as much fun out of it now as you were then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I love my job. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I wonder not only how do I get paid for this, but how do I get paid what I get paid for this? Um, it's working. You know, I I work nights and stuff, which is uh, it goes with my schedule, but it means you know less time to watch TV and stuff. But uh, but I, I really enjoy it. I love the people I work with and, and, and the job I do and, you know, the, the, the people it, it impacts, you know, knowing that what I do gets read by, you know, more than 100,000 people every day. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And yeah, I also have my blog, which I, which I also enjoy. I, I, I put in a heck of a lot of work into it. Um, and, you know, it allows me to, to express myself and, and say things that, Maybe aren't at that the level of professionalism that you would you would see in a newspaper? Yeah, you'd be surprised. I, sometimes I think the blog is actually more professional than the newspaper. Well, that's so, so, sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay. Then um, uh, I had one thing along there, but you got me off the track with the blogging and stuff. Sorry. Like that. So that's okay. <laughs> it's more of a conversation than an actual Q and A sort of thing. Um, yeah, in terms of that sort of work, because uh, yeah, you're a copy editor, right? So then, in the technical terms, that means you take other people's stuff and you make it absolutely smack dab, amazing, and wonderful prose. Ideally, yes. <laughs> Did you, in, because I, within journalism and stuff like that, there are many, many jobs. Was it copywriting that you wanted to do, you ended up in? If there are ideas of wanting to be star reporter for the Gazette or somebody in the future? Is this career? So, when I worked at, at, the, at the Link, I was... Uh, I was sort of both. I was I was I was an editor. I was an online editor, uh, and I was also uh, their 
chief political correspondent, that being political being in the student politics, um, for quite a while. And, and I enjoyed each of those aspects. Um, but when I applied to the Gazette, it was specifically for copy editing. I, I, you know, they allowed you to, to sort of choose which one you prefer, copy editing or, or writing. And I, and I said, I, I prefer copy editing. Um, I'm not crazy about the idea of being, being a reporter because for a few reasons. One is, and you may object to this, I don't think I write all that well. Um, yeah, you're right, I do object to it. You do very well. <laughs> I, I, I tell other people, and they're like, what are you talking about? I, I'm, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm very critical of my own writing, especially on my blog, and uh, I, I see all the faults in it. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see myself as that, as that good of a writer, and I see my talents better in terms of improving other people's work. Um, I, I don't, I'm not crazy about, I, not, not that I wouldn't do it, you know, mm -hmm. if it became reporter or nothing, I will take reporter. Um, and, and I do occasionally write for the paper, but, you know, I prefer sitting at a desk in the evenings, you know, taking a, a story that, that someone has given me, finding good photos for it, laying out a page, writing a headline, you know, putting it, putting it together, setting it up on a page or, or on a website. Um, and, uh, and I, I leave the, the reporting, the writing, uh, that to the experts in that field. And I assume that it was a similar sort of process that sort of got you into print media as opposed to TV or radio. Um, I don't know if there's any, like, clinching moment. I mean, I worked for newspapers, yes. for student newspapers. I didn't work for student radio or student TV. Um, you know, I worked very briefly for CBC Radio. Um, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. What'd you do for them? I was, uh, this was, I'd gotten an internship during my uh, Concordia journalism uh, program, and it was like two weeks. I spent two weeks at, at, uh, at CBC Radio. And just, you know, or sorry, a week at CBC Radio. I think it was three days in radio, two days in TV or something like that. And sort of, you know, learn how it works. And, uh, and they invited me back over the holidays, you know, the desperate for staff they need to fill. And so I was working as a researcher for, um, mostly for the Home Run Show in the afternoons under uh, Anne Legacy Dowson. Oh, that was a long time ago. That was, uh, 2005, 2006. Sorry, 2004, 2005. And um, so I, I think I ended up working there a grand total of about three weeks, you know, some days on, some days off. Um, and uh, what's interesting about that is that, this is sort of getting a little bit off track here, but, uh, so, as I was saying, um, so they were, they were setting up two new accounts on this system, and one was for this, this young, motivated reporter by the name of Andrew Chang, um, who I understand would go on to other things later. Uh, and the other one was for me, and it was like, you know, set this account up for you. Um, he'll be with us a little, a little while, you know, he's here. Miles um, and that account ended up being used by casual workers at CDC for the next, like, five years. So even though I was only there for, like, two weeks, my name was present for years okay. after that. And so when people would, would hear about me, this was before the blog really took off, um, they would be like, oh my god, you're, you're, you're that guy. You're that guy whose login I have to use when I, when, when I work. Um, so, so I made my, made my mark that way. In any case, um, so I, I worked there and uh, most of my job when I was a researcher at Home Run was um, tracking people down for interviews, booking interviews. And it was kind of secretarial, I guess. Not, not in any way to you know, denigrate the, the, the work of these fine journalists who work here, but it wasn't really what I was interested in, and I think it sort of reflected in how I worked. Um, you know, I, 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 I think I did an adequate job, but I don't, think I, I don't think I did a fantastic job. So I realized that it wasn't really what I was into. Now, of course, there are plenty of other, you know, ways to make your mark on TV and radio other than booking interviews, but um, 
that's part of the thing that I, that I don't like about reporting is just uh, trying to track people down, playing phone tag, you know, talking with uh, media representatives, trying to get your hands on someone, especially if you're trying to do that on deadline. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of have to do that out of necessity for my blog sometimes, but it's, it's just so annoying. Um, and that's, that's the one thing about copy editing is I come in for, for seven hours, I sit at my desk, Occasionally, if there's something serious, I'll call the reporter. Um, but other than that, I just, I just, I just do the work. I don't have to wait for anyone. Okay. As I said, my, my, honestly, my goal is is to to enjoy life, and uh, you know, not take not take work too seriously. At least not when I'm, you know, when I'm not working. Um, and I mean, I, I don't, I don't aspire to big prizes. I don't, I don't aspire to constantly. Uh, you know, go up in the world, get, you know, go look for promotion after promotion. I know, I know people who are like that, and I have all the respect in the world for them, but I prefer doing this to managing people like me, okay. where, you know, I don't get paid for overtime, and I'm constantly working late, and one of the best things about my job is that when I leave my job, that's it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. You know, I don't sit at home waiting by the phone for someone to call. I just... It's in. There's no homework, and I, I particularly enjoy that. Very cool. Um, yeah. Then while we're still on the news side, given that everybody is ringing the death knell of journalism and saying newspapers are going the way of the dodo and TV is morphing into the internet, do you have any opinions on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two things. One is obviously, uh, you know media, there's so much media out there, uh, so many small media outlets, so many uh, different media that have, you know, put stuff online that you don't need to go to the newspaper, you, can, you know, you don't need to go to the Gazette, you can go to CBC's website, for example. Um, and so advertising is going down, subscriptions are going down, young people are going online, they're not waiting for a, a soaked newspaper to plop on their front door every morning that they have to pay for. Um, so there's there's that, there's the demographic shift and, and sort of the, the media sphere shift. And the the other problem is the response to that, which is newspapers' profit margins are going down, so they're cutting staff, they're cutting the news hold, they're cutting quality. And that sort of just kind of accelerates the, the kind of death spiral that uh, that newspapers are in. Um, it's been at the same, I mean, there's a wide range of opinions about how this is going. Some exaggerated to one side saying, oh my god, you know, newspapers are going to be dead in five years. We're never going to have newspapers again. Uh, and some minimize it too much on the other side saying, you know, we'll, we'll always have newspapers. There's nothing to worry about. We just have to invest or find the next gimmick that's going to, you know, make us a whole lot of money. Um, that side is, is sort of going by the wayside, uh, particularly among, among newspaper executives. But it's hard to predict what the future is going to be. There's no I think, I mean, we still have books. I think we'll always have some form of printed media. But what that will be in 20 years, who knows? No, because the thing that strikes me, and I'm definitely contrarian to this, two things. One is that when I was growing up, there were, what was it, four newspapers. There's Le Devoir, La Presse, the Journal, and the Gazette. There's briefly the Star, but I was just, which one I really didn't count. I couldn't figure out that afternoon newspaper anyhow. That whole concept is just bizarre. Um, Made sense, okay. Yes, yeah, so I didn't get the late-breaking news when it happens. I even delivered it for about a week and a half, but had to go uphill. But now, if you count it, there are actually six newspapers. Six daily. Yeah. And then the other thing that would suggest that's a full, which one, 50, no, uh, which one, 33% increase. They had it right first and time, so 50%. Assuming you're counting the newspapers equally. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would imagine they all serve the same sort of news. There isn't, while well, the opinions are different and the sizes are different, the formats are different, they're all pretty much given the same damn headlines. Canadians lose. Uh, and so yeah, on. yeah, and, and and that's a big problem for 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 print media and, and for all media really is, you know, you're covering the same yeah. thing. You go to a Canadians game, you have like 30, 40 yeah. journalists, 
uh, all trying to cover it. And but they're the thing they're, you know, you're trying to be different. You have, you have to be. You have to have better analysis mm -hmm. than the other guys. You have to have you know more features, more exclusives. Um, repeating what everyone else mm -hmm. has is sort of going by the wayside. Yeah. Except except in the free dailies, mm -hmm. who you know don't really have the staff or. Uh, or the resources to you know put out exclusive after exclusive and 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 do all this analysis. They're really just you know give me the news in, in twenty seconds. But the thing that struck me is because cause in New York I don't even want to count how many newspapers are there now. And it used to be again three when I lived there, and now they're they used to have like seventeen or something like that. Now they're back up to. And I was there recently, and there were actually people on the news on the corners shouting, "Get your news! Get your news!" Like the newsboys from the nineteen thirties that you would see it now. It's just wow, it's just a complete circle. And that is where I'm just saying I disagree that there is going to be the death of the newspaper. It's just morphing into something different. And it's like Groucho Marx said, what this country really needs is a three-cent, uh, which one, what is it, a three-cent newspaper. One family could take a, uh, their nickel, they could buy it on a newspaper, get a nickel's result, or nickel's change because but at the time, newspapers were seven cents, and it was playing off of that concept of a nickel being five cents versus the nickel being, anyhow, I'll send you the link. <laughs> but anyhow, basically, <laughs> it's making a cheaper newspaper so that, yeah, everybody wants to make a cheaper newspaper, at which point, construct, but anyhow, okay. I'll and now we have free newspapers. Yes. Mm -hmm. To me, if they're free newspapers, they're still newspapers. They're not called something else. Yeah. And, you know, Metro, on the island, mm -hmm. on the, in the area where it's distributed, now, mind you, this was before they lost the Metro contract. But they were the most read paper mm -hmm. um, because people could just pick it up. Even, even people who don't want papers, certainly people who don't want to buy papers, they can pick it up, they can read it you know, while they're on the metro and their cell phones don't work uh, and then toss it when they get to their, to their job.